Inspired by the modernization of Mid-Autumn Festival, the fading cultural activity of playing lanterns, and the lack of physical interactions in nowadays screen-based entertainment, this project aims to create an interactive mobile prototype named Mixed Reality Lantern, which ventures to embed the natural physical gameplay seamlessly into a mythical virtual playground. This project examines the question of how could physical gameplay be embedded into digital augmented reality heritage to create a higher level of cultural engagement in virtual embodiment. The purpose of Mixed Reality Lantern is to bring back the craft of making lanterns as a cultural activity in Mid-Autumn Festival by making it an essential piece to complete the AR kit and bring natural interactions such as body movement and physical world awareness into mobile gameplay. In terms of bigger goals, the project hopes to achieve a higher level of player sensory gratification, introduce a new type of mobile experience that features both tangible physical game experience and fantasy virtual game elements and to be widely enjoyed by participants in Mid-Autumn Festival celebration events. The target audience for this project would be nostalgic Asian community who witnessed the change of the festival and want to experience a form of childhood play. Other ethnicities are also welcome to enjoy the experience as a physical gameplay to explore new cultures. For younger audience, the project hopes to inspire them to learn about their heritage and deeply rooted traditions. The possible location for this gameplay could be either outdoors or indoors, even though it is encouraged to play outdoors to enjoy the beauty of the moon. If played at home, the experience will feature a simulated moon to make the experience fully complete. If played outdoors in the park or public venues such as Federation Square, the app will remind players to focus on the beauty of the real moon. Also, the activities can be projected on the big screen to enhance the festivity of the experience. To achieve a 12-week timeline schedule, the project will only support one-player exploration experience in which they can have interactions with virtual objects using their physical handmade lanterns. In the future, the project scope can be expanded to support multiplayer interactions which allow them to share their augmentation and interact with each other more meaningfully. The approach to increase physical interaction in augmented reality gaming has been followed recently by research labs such as Human Pac-Man and Touch Space from the Mixed Reality Lab of the National University of Singapore. Augmented reality works that touch the area of cultural heritage digitization can be named into thin air by Manzi Art Space, which makes AR work easily accessible to the public, as well as Wayfinder Live by Choi Innocent, which uses urban space as gameplay and investigates the ability of location-based gaming to facilitate deeper embodied interaction with public spaces. However, there is still a lack of examples that touch both areas of physical gameplay interactions and augmented cultural heritage, which can make this project's investigation values transpose to both cultural professionals and interactive media practitioners. To complete this project, it will be compulsory to complete the research and study of cultural heritage like handmade lanterns and mythical creatures. Concept development includes brainstorming, mind mapping, and refining the concept. Interaction study and iterative user flow, level design, digitization of culture elements from 2D to user interface to 3D modeling and animation, an iterative cycle of tests and prototypes applying different AR methods to achieve a seamless transition between virtual and real-world interactions and reflective journal to document the process of iterative making. Project planning is the most important aspect in the pre-production phase. I made a project checklist that is categorized by group and colors, including concepts and ideas, sketching and 2D design, interaction design, 3D assets development, AR Unity development, post-production and submission tasks, then I made an achievable timeline using Figma, which features the color group activities over 12 weeks of the semester. Notion is a software I find super useful for the next stage, which is tracking all of the tasks I have created, according to their types, priority, due date, and progress. Using Notion, I am able to collaborate easily with my developer to fix difficult AR technical issues and track due dates. This process has transformed the way I manage my design tasks. 
Studio 2 has given me the opportunity to develop critical and creative thinking through ideas bouncing with my mentors and a lot of themes have emerged from these conversations. Initially, I made a mind map and my ideas and direction for the project is still unclear. However, the ideas of Mixed Reality Lantern has emerged from these early processes due to the amount of notes and difficulty to add connections and expand existing ideas. I discover Obsidian, an app that helps me sort out notes for all of these amazing and mind-blowing discussions and let me connect ideas, artists, works, methods, inspirations, reflection, and processes that I have never thought can be related to each other. Followed by my second brain in Obsidian is the inspiration board for the initial theme of cultural art and globalization and a mood board of mid-autumn festival lanterns in Vietnam. After mood boards, I have done a lot of sketches to let my creativity and imagination flow. These concept art sketches convey nostalgia factors and my personal childhood memories. I use Procreate and iPad to generate different color tests, texture tests for the sketches. Procreate is a wonderful tool for designers and illustrators to enhance their digital art. It is very fast to use and to switch between sketching, coloring, and texturing phase. Before doing a final user flowchart, I did a lot of sketches to imagine the way users experience the app. The flowchart is an important element of production, which allows me to break down the experience into different level design, difficulty, and complexity for developing, helping me create achievable outcomes for folio 1 and folio 2 of the semester. Exploring typography and colors are the next steps in the design, where I spend time looking up fonts and typefaces that can support both languages in English and Vietnamese, and have traces of Art Deco style in the early 20th century, which adds a nostalgic factor. Colors are being generated warmer than the general neon light palette, to create more distinction and more resemblance of Vietnamese nature elements. I'm very happy to receive feedback from my mentors that my palette is unique and not cliché, which I can confidently apply these colors to my initial 3D assets. The modeling and animating of 3D mythical elements in Cinema 4D is a very fun process, which I can play around with different movements to convey more imaginative factor of the moon-related playground. The initial sound application tries to convey the feeling of nostalgia, magic, mythical and environmental nature as playground through ambient sound. I made a sound plan which includes a description of different types of sound necessary to enhance the experience, which includes music when the game starts, button click sound when the new page is loading, when all objects are collected, hovering sound to instruct user during gameplay, and attractive capture sound when user succeeds to catch a creature. For the app UI design, I made a logo and app icon as well as banners, activity description screen, and first level introducing screen design. Iterative cycle of prototyping and testing is the most important aspect in my production process. From making small craft projects such as Star Lantern, Paper Cut Lantern, and implementing a selfie stick into the design of the lantern stick, to different AR methods testing such as AR object recognition and scanning, AR fiducial marker, the results from these tests have led to the discovery of a new method called Half Virtual Element, which stands for a virtual stick that is invisible and overlaps with the real stick, hence tricking with the player optical illusion, and makes the technicality of the experience much easier to overcome. Substantial issues such as occlusion is then discovered and fixed through different methods including manual custom mobile occlusion and AR occlusion manager. This process leads to a new inquiry that is not based on technology, like marker or AR scanning, but focuses on achieving the merge between physical world and virtual world, physical interactions and virtual interactions of the player. The first play testing at night in a wide area leads to a finding that AR tracking at night is not consistent and would be more reliable in a well-lit environment. Other findings arise from that issue, such as heightened difficulty to catch the virtual objects, result in more challenging and fun, in which the concept of player is immersion can be explored. When being interviewed, the players report that they were reminded of childhood play memories, which opens up the discussion for childhood play, and is an expected result from a player coming from different culture backgrounds without the prior knowledge of the meaning of such cultural activity. 
The second playtest, also potential location scouting at daytime at Federation Square, is also very pleasant, as the experience looks beautiful under the sun, with newly added changes such as the glow to the creatures when being caught. The trip is also to experience a new exhibition called AR Art Trail, which features AR work from renowned artists. Using their acute art application to view the public AR artworks, I learned a lot about what to include in the UI to help the users when using new technology like AR. Buttons such as taking pictures, recording videos should also be added to my project in the future, for the users need to capture the AR memories. Thanks to professional pre-production, I have discovered and learned how to use project management tools such as Notion, how to organize my thoughts and ideas using Obsidian, and developed a strong sense of outlining a timeline and achievable goals and outcomes for my project. In the next six weeks, I will continue to work on accomplishing level one experience and possibly finish level two by the end of the semester if there are no unexpected technical issues. Level 3 experience, which requires sound gameplay and interactions, can potentially be done in Studio 3, and the aspects of shared augmentation can also be explored in the future, which leads to an expandable inquiry of social interactions in AR gameplay. Mid-Autumn Festival in 2022 is happening in two weeks, so I have two weeks left until then to complete an AR filter, which can be used as a gift to be playtested by friends, families, and peers to celebrate the festival. I will continue to work and collaborate with my Unity developer. I may search for more experienced Unity developers to help with potentially difficult AR issues in the future. For sound, I will try to achieve the design for myself, but are open to collaborate with other sound designers if the opportunity arrives. At the end of the semester, I hope to release a downloadable app ready to play and send my project to Federation Square for future celebrative artwork considerations. Thank you for watching.